All right, let's do three state space examples. And I carefully choose these three examples. If you well understand these three, you should be able to put all different um, ordinary differential equations into the state space forms. And for today, I will be on the linear domain. Again, as I mentioned uh, earlier in my other video, I will cover nonlinear case later. All right. For the first two examples, I will look at one input, one input. It has these inputs derivatives, but still u is the one input, and uh, one output y. And then I'm going to look at two inputs, two outputs, um, and to generalize some of the concepts. All right, so let's look at the very first example. Our ordinary differential equation representing some physical system looking like y triple dot equals to minus iy minus by dot minus c dot dot plus c. You can also have a constant here, I just put it one. And for the sake, you know, this a, b, c can be minus or uh, plus, or you can simply think they are like one. All right, since this uh, first important item, since this is a third order ordinary differential equation, we always look at the output's highest derivative to determine the order of it ODE, order differential equation, third order, so you need three state variables. All right, so you can choose, you know, you need to have all basically y, y dot, and y dot dot, you know, highest order uh, minus one, minus two, minus three, so you need to have uh, the orders, um, basically, not the highest order, but the other derivatives of y. Um, and the order doesn't matter, so if you wish, you can repeat this example, you can choose this as x1 to be y dot dot, x2 to be y, x3 to be y dot, so any other is fine. I usually start with the lowest order, which is y, and go up to the um, third order minus one, y dot dot, personal preference. All right, so now once you put things into the state space form, x1 dot equals to y dot, in other words, x1 dot equals to x2, since x2 is y dot. So here, if you look at x1 dot equals to, it only depends on x2, nothing else. Likewise, x2 dot equals to y dot dot, but x2 dot equals to y dot dot, y dot dot is x3, so x2 dot equals to x3, and nothing else. And finally, x3 dot is y dot dot dot, right? So if you differentiate this, you obtain that, which is this part of the equation. So now this is nothing but x1, this is nothing but x2, this is nothing but x3. So we write as basically x3 dot equals to y dot dot dot, which is this equation, minus a x1, minus b x2, minus c x3, plus u. If we have some term here, d, this will be d, so nothing else will change. And finally, what is my output? My output is the first state, so y equals to first state 0, 0, so you have x1 being the output. So we put this uh, equations of motion to x that equals to ax plus bu, y equals to cx form. Done. Alright, so second case, now I'm going to look at what is the order of the system, 2. We are looking at the highest order of the output, y, it is in this case 2. So what it, this is a slightly complicated case because we not only have u, but also its derivatives. And once you have started to have its derivatives, we are going to do a trick. So when you have in other words, when you have an ODE having not only u but its derivatives, you are always going to follow this two-step procedure for all um, other examples as well. All right, step one, go to the Laplace domain. So when, once you go to the Laplace domain, subject to the zero initial conditions, you have s to the power of y equals to minus ay minus bsy plus cu plus d s u plus e s to the power of u. So then group things depend on u and group terms depend on 
y like this. Now you are writing the transfer function, so you need to put output first, then input. So here is your transfer function, and the step one is over. Find the transfer function that corresponds to this equations of motion. Step two, separate this transfer function like this. First, put its denominator. Numerator is unity. Multiplied by, call, give it a name, I call it omega, why not? Um, and the numerator divided by the denominator, if you like, right? If you multiply these two, you obtain this transfer function. But you need to um, separate them in this particular way. Always and always put the denominator first and the numerator second. Otherwise, the following steps that I'm going to show you will not work. All right, so let's do it. Um, Basically, the first step, I am looking at here, this part. Basically, output of this part is omega, its input is u. So omega over u, it, it can be captured by this transfer function. I am taking inverse Laplace transformation, write basically the cross product omega multiplied by s to the power of 2 is omega dot dot b s multiplied by omega is b omega dot and a multiplied by omega is a omega equals to u multiplied by 1 which is u okay we are now back in the time domain now we are going to highest derivative is for this output is second order by the way you probably you realized omega is a you know uh, its capital version is this omega so they are related with each other since on the laplace domain we use capitals all right so now i am choosing my first state variable to be x1 second state variable to be x2 which is the omega and omega dot now i am writing x1 dot x1 dot equals to basically omega dot which is x2 nothing else and x2 dot is right x2 dot dot uh, sorry x2 dot is omega dot dot and omega dot dot is basically this part of the equation minus b omega dot minus a omega plus u but omega dot is x2 omega is x1 so we have basically minus a x1 minus b x2 plus u and you are done with the first part, you obtained x that equals to ax plus bu, but where is my output? All right, the output will come from this second part, right? Output is nothing but omega multiplied by this term. So basically, if you take, if you go take La La inverse Laplace transformation, y equals to omega as e which is omega dot dot multiplied by e on the time domain. Omega multiplied by ds is d omega dot and omega multiplied by c is c omega. We are again back in the time domain. So this is a two step process and the second step has sub step one, sub step two. We are on the sub step two. Now, what is omega dot dot? Omega dot dot once again is here, omega dot dot equals to u minus these terms. I take it from there, right? Observe omega dot, omega dot, I am using omega dot dot here, which is this part of this equation, plus dw dot plus c uh, omega, so d omega dot plus c omega. Now, I am grouping terms, right? I already called x1 to be omega, x2 to be omega dot. So here we have x2, this is x1, this is x2, this is x1. Grouping terms from here to here like this. And then finally we have c minus a x1. This should be here, x1. And d minus b x2 plus u. Now we have the d term. So now looking at the final answer, we have x that equals to ax plus bu and y equals to cx plus du. So 
Although rarely, sometimes this du term pops up in uh, state space representations of linear systems. This d is called feed through matrix. So it basically says that your output can get directly affected by the input that you are applying. Statically, in addition to dynamically through ax plus bu cx terms. All right, so this is how we handle, uh, this is slightly harder example, you can stop the video watch again, but if you have higher orders of y, depending on higher order of u, you always have this two-step process and the second step has two sub-steps. Always the same, you know, all, if you understand well this example, you can do all other examples related to the, that they look like this. All right, so now, I would like to shift gears. Let me erase some stuff. I'm out of space. I would like to look at this example. We have two cards. The first card M with kilograms M1 connected to the second card uh, with, which has a mass of M2 kilograms. And if you write the free body diagram for this, again, I, I would like to focus on modeling, not like dynamics. So basically, if you, if, you have, if you find the free body diagram of first mass applied, applies Newton's second law, you are going to get this ordinary differential equation. If you do the same thing to the second mass, you are going to get this equation. Now, I don't want to complicate things. I just would like to focus on this problem. I would like to assume m is one kilogram m2 is one kilogram this spring constant is unity unity okay i just would like to uh, unlike other examples like abc I, I just would like to focus on these dynamics so if you do so we have now two coupled equations y1 dot dot equals to u1 minus y1 plus y2 and y2 dot dot equals to u2 plus y1 minus y2. All right, this is a little bit different than other two examples, right? In the first example, we looked at y dot dot dot, highest order was three. So we state, we select three state variables, one for y, one for y dot, and one for y dot dot, uh, one minus the highest order. In the second example, we had y dot dot as the highest order. We select um, two state variables corresponding to omega and omega dot. Now, these two ODEs each has each second order. Now, first, if, it, since this is the case, I need two state variables for y1, y1 dot, and I need two state variables for y2 and y2 dot. So you can simply assign x1 to be y1, x2 to be uh, y1 dot, x3 to be y2, and x4 to be y2 dot. Now, order doesn't matter. If you, if you can perfectly go with x1 to be y1, this is y2, y1 dot, y, y2 dot, order doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we represent this, the same physical system. So now, if we write x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot, x4 dot equals to some matrix A multiplied by x1, x2, x3, x4, plus we have now two inputs, u1, u2, right, this matrix has to be 4 by 4, A matrix, this matrix needs to be 4 by 2, since we have two inputs and four state variables, and we have two outputs, y1, y2, and we have x1, x2, x3, x4. We are going to have basically this, since this is 4, this is 2, this needs to be 2 by 4. All right, so now we need to complete uh, what is inside. All right, so first of all, which pen should I use? Let me, let me go with my black marker. 
So first of all, x1 dot is y1 dot equals to from here, which is x2. So x1 dot is x2, nothing else. I am done with it. Now x2 dot is y1 dot dot, which is u1 minus y1 plus y2. y1 was x1, y2 was x3. So we have x2 dot equals to minus x1, x3, and it depends on the first control signal like this u1. All right, halfway through. Now x3 dot is y2 dot, y2 dot is x4, so we have 0, 0, 0, 1, and nothing else. And x4 dot is y2 dot dot, which is u2 plus y1 minus y2. Once again, this was x1, this was x3. Based on these definitions, we have 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0. It depends on the second control input. And finally, outputs. Basically, x1 and x3 storing our outputs. Here we go. Now, if you only watch video and if you didn't watch my video, which is called control, state feedback and output feedback control, how you distinguish between whether you should go with a state feedback controller or an output feedback controller depends if your states are available. State vector is available. If state vector is available for feedback, then you should go with state feedback. Now, within the context of this example, what is meant by if our state uh, vector is available? Basically, if you can measure the output positions of these two cards, y1 and y2, as well as cart velocities for each cart, then this means that you know x1, x2, x3, and x4. In this case, since x1, x2, x3, x4, in other words, the entire state vector is available for feedback, then you should go with state feedback control approaches, which are slightly less complicated than output feedback control approaches. If this is not the case, if you, can, if you only have GPS on your cards that you can only measure your positions Y1 and Y2, and you don't have any sensor to measure your velocity, then this means your only outputs uh, Y1 and Y2 available for feedback. Since you don't know X2, velocity of cart 1, and X4, velocity of X2, then you don't know X entirely. In this case, since you don't know entirely your state vector, we say state vector is not measurable. In this case, you only need to rely on your outputs and you need to go with output feedback control while when controlling this system. Alright, I hope you find this video helpful. Um, stay tuned for more videos.